What's up everybody, ATO Ace the Outsider here, bringing some ideas and thoughts on something that's been in my head and in my heart for the past few months. Of course, I'm talking about Black Panther, T'Challa, King T'Challa, if you will, and I'm talking about King T'Challa on Martin Luther King Day, because I, I got kings in my mind. So to start the day off, um, in remembrance of uh, Martin Luther King, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., uh, and all the kings that have come before and after him, uh, it's important that you know, we salute the kings, right? I know sometimes it doesn't feel like y'all seen or something. someone's trying to erase y'all. I understand that. Um, I'm the uplifting the kings today. You guys have made, just, you guys as in everybody, as in all the kings that have come before, as in all the kings that are ahead of us, uh, that, that feeling of the king, that, that perspective of the king, y'all are important, right? Y'all not going anywhere. Queens can be present too. Kings can be present in the same space. It is all good. All right, so shout out to all the kings that are out there. So yeah, so the reason why I'm posting this video is because I'm kind of sick of going through all these comments and these forums and these uh, just debates about what uh, the next thing they're gonna do as far as they as in Marvel is gonna do with the Black Panther series, Black Panther movie series. You know, we got the news a few months ago talking about uh, Kevin Feige announced that for Black Panther 2, for Black Panther 2, there wasn't going to be a recast for T'Challa's role. And, you know, it's like little bits of information. Like, Disney's smart. Marvel's smart, right? They're, they have so much money at their disposal. And they just know how people respond and react to things. Because, you know, they might not read all these comments, but they know how people react to things. So they're giving out little breadcrumbs and being real selective about their language. And that's for a good reason. A, you don't want to give too much away, keep people in suspense, you want to drive up traffic to anything that says uh, a teaser or a trailer or a review or anything else. You want to kind of lead people in, right? Um, also, um, it just keeps things interesting and we don't want to get the same story. We're not going to get the same story we got in other uh, comics and everything right, like that. We're going to get something totally unique and so totally different. And they might not even know exactly where they're going with things, or they do, and it's just like, of course, they're not going to give you all the information because that's what keeps it exclusive, right? Um, and also just protect the actors and all that as well. So, uh, with that being said, they announced that there wasn't going to be a recast for T'Challa and Black Panther two. They didn't even they didn't even say for Black Panther two, right? That's how selective Disney is being about their language. They just said. We're going to recast him. Now, that doesn't mean that there won't be a T'Challa in Black Panther 3 or Black Panther 4 or Black Panther 5, uh, Doomsday or Avengers 8, uh, Kang's Return or Black Panther 8, uh, T'Challa goes to the grocery store with Deadpool. I don't know. <laughs> like, it, okay, so like I said, they're being specific about what they're saying. The other theory is, of course, when we have Wakanda, uh, everybody's after the throne, they have to vibranium. So usually, when we saw in the first movie, there was a power struggle, right? So it's quite possible that Black Panther 2, um, as Kevin Feige announced, uh, the, there will be more, I guess, smaller stories about Wakanda being told in Black Panther 2. So it's quite possible this is more about a battle for the throne if we're going off the Infinity War uh, theory than uh, everybody's fighting for the throne. So it means the, there's tribes all around Wakanda, all throughout Wakanda. Maybe it's about how they're kind of coming into, all right, well, now there's a political uh, gap, and how do we fill that, right? So that's quite possible. And then, of course, people have been saying that Shuri might take over as Black Panther. I see a lot of <laughs> comments about that, saying that this MCU Shuri isn't, doesn't have that warrior feel to her. It doesn't really seem like she can be either a, a regal um you know leader or not a warrior right because when she she's using the gauntlets blast 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 and then they stop working she was like oh <laughs> most other warriors if they have any type of uh fortitude as t'challa would find a way to do hand-in-hand -hand combat um it doesn't mean that she can't like bulk up or train herself to really you know fill that role but again it's not just uh, Shuri, there's also Nakia. Nakia wasn't the Black Panther at any time throughout the comics or any other type of format, but she's still a warrior, 
right? So it's quite possible. Maybe even she goes for the throne. Maybe M'Baku goes for the throne. Maybe Okoye goes for the throne. Uh, there's also a theory that Killmonger might come back. I just read a comment saying that uh, T'Challa put one of the Kamoyo bees in his womb before, uh, did he push him in? I can't remember if he pushed him into the water or not. I don't know, I think he just, he just bled out. Um, but that's one of the theories as well. But again, this is Black Panther 2. T'Challa might, have, might not have a bigger role, but of course the setup for the rest of the universe, they're gonna have more Avengers movies, they're gonna have the Fantastic Four movie, they're gonna have the X-Men movie, and you really can't do too much, too much with those titles without Black Panther because he's, he plays such an integral role, especially now that uh, Wakanda has been opened up to the rest of the world. Of course, you have to see how Black Panther uh, and T'Challa kind of fits into the rest of the world. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention to the fans, to the many fans that are out there, I appreciate all of y'all. I know you all are very passionate. You've been waiting for 50 years for a Black Panther movie to come out. And now it seems like once he's you know, on the precipice of really being exposed to the world and the rest of the world is finally feeling what you felt for all these years, because you've been telling people about uh, Black Panther, you know, for your entire comic fanhood. And it seems like he's just been snatched away. And like this announcement that T'Challa will not be recast for the Black Panther 2 movie is, is heartbreaking and you're raging out and you're like, oh, you're fi a black man finally makes it to the big screen. And then yeah, you rip him away. It feels like an attack on your manhood, which I get it. It, it should be protected, right? Especially black manhood. Um, but with that being said, I know that fear is there, right? Um, and I, this is why I did this on Martin Luther King Jr. Day is because, you know, we've had so many uh, uh, role models, kings taken away from us, queens taken away from us. Uh, so that fear is kind of like a trigger for y'all. I totally understand and I totally get that. But I'm not, I don't think this is one of those circumstances where it's an attack on black manhood. Um, it's a difficult circumstance. I think Disney and Marvel were both in a difficult position. I'm pretty sure they had an awareness of Chadwick's condition and had to be very careful about what they did and how they planned things out. If they knew he had uh, the cancer growing during the first uh, Black Panther filming or the Endgame filming, um, maybe their writers had to be like, you know, let's see if we can work something out where this sequel isn't really around the child as much just in case this thing is advancing too fast for us to control. Um, so, and I'm thinking professionally. I mean, think about it professionally. If you've worked in uh, cinema, if you've worked in movies, if you've worked with big production companies, when they're putting money, millions of dollars on, on these actors, they have to be really careful about what they do and how they make decisions and how they plan out stories because you can't really retcon with movies as much as you can do with uh, comics. It takes a bigger budget to do that. So, um, and I know the other sentiment is that People just don't want to see Shuri like at all. They don't want to see a, a Black Panther movie without T'Challa. And again, doesn't mean that Black Panther 2 won't have a T'Challa because I'm still seeing things like, I'm not going to see Black Panther 2 if T'Challa isn't in it. Or I don't want to see Shuri come to the throne. It's too soon. They haven't tapped into T'Challa's genius. He needs to be in more movies before they switch to the throne. And I'm like, I get it. I totally get it. But here's another theory. They might try to placate to black women. And I say that because like Marvel and Disney aren't stupid. They've, they've caught a lot of flack for having a lack of diversity in the past few years. Um, and there's only so many black Disney princesses, maybe there's less than five, I'm sure. Uh, Tiana, Shuri counts as a princess. There might be one more that I'm missing. If you want to count, uh, homegirl from Atlantis, even though she's Atlantean. I don't know if that's a different... Anyway. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. So they might try to placate to, to black women, which isn't totally a bad thing because they understand that black women drive a lot of the conversations and attention on, uh, on, on these things that have buzz to them, right? Uh, black women shift cultures and they lead cultures and lead conversations and they just got their eyes on them all the time, right? Because black women are just so explosive and beautiful. And it's like, they may they may very well be trying to put a black woman as queen of Wakanda, maybe temporarily, 
um, while this whole shift of power thing is going on. So I think that's one of my other working theories, quite possibly. So these are just some few initial thoughts, things that I, I've processed over the past few months because, like I said, I've been in these forums and these groups and these comments where guys are just raging out because they think their character is being snatched away. And there's some really poor arguments like, oh, Captain America got to be in all these movies and T'Challa gets his second movie, he's not in it. Like, again, uh, I'm just trying to say, yeah, pay attention to the way that language is formed. Um, don't just go off of the hype. It's really easy for people to get caught into that trap simply with a, a tagline is all it takes for people to just go off the handle. Um, and there's a lot of stories of full Wakanda to be told. And when we're talking about Black Panther, Black Panther is not just the king or whoever's sitting on the throne, right? Black Panther is all of Wakanda. Black Panther is Adora Milaje. Black Panther is uh, the Queen Mother. Black Panther is Shuri. Black Panther is... Uh, all the very all the various tribes within the mining tribe the river tribe the border tribes all those tribes the jabari tribe right wakanda's part of that too or if that is part of wakanda yeah wakanda is also his enemies too there are various enemies right we didn't really get to see uh naganda in the last film so they might be doing something with that as well and then think about all the technology and all the just the different people within wakanda that that are uh, moving around and doing their thing. We didn't really get to see too much of their stories and they're as important as the Black Panther. I know that's gonna be some more trigger language for y'all, but think about it. If you really wanna flesh things out, um, and also if you wanna do spinoffs and everything like that, you gotta, you gotta develop the intricacies of Wakanda. And that's why, I'm surprised I haven't brought this up earlier, that's part, part of the reason why uh, we started the Wakanda Alliance is because we wanted to see Wakanda for more than just Black Panther. We wanted to see um, where the inspiration is coming from from those cultural roots and see where uh, the technology and the spirituality and the art and the history kind of intersect and make this this fictional um, region uh, feel closer to home for people of the African diaspora. And so I think it's really smart that they do start tell those other smaller stories just so people can see that, you know, it's not all about the king. It's about the people, too. Also, <laughs> if you read the comments, there's always a power struggle going on. Like, they could also do, like, a Midnight Angels type of route where they kind of develop the relationship between Aneka and Io and in, in the movie, and maybe that starts to develop early. They also have to, I guess they left off with the herbs. Maybe there's a way that that kind of gets um, brought back. Maybe there's a, a plot to restore the herbs and all that stuff. Um, explaining more about how vibranium works. There could be stories around that, the whole Extraction Academy and how, how all that works. Uh, also, what kind of outside of the borders? How is what kind of developing relationships with the rest of Africa? How are they developing relationships with the rest of the world? Because uh, at the end of the first one, T'Challa and Shuri, they went to Oakland and said, yo, th this building's gonna be the new, like, embassy or actually i don't know if they said like an embassy or a resource center a research center but it can develop you know a bunch of different ways so that also might be a possibility so i'm saying all this to say that <laughs> just take it easy for a minute y'all just think about think about the positives think about the potential think about the things that you can expand on besides wakanda right because that can be done with captain america or Iron Man or Fantastic Four, right? They're kind of working in, uh, in within borders that we're familiar with. They haven't really, I mean, you know, Doctor Strange dives into like the mystic realms and Thor has, you know, the different other realms besides uh, Asgard. <laughs> so it's a different, different things that, it, but when it comes to Wakanda, again, there's so many other cultural routes they could take and so many possibilities they can take. So. Just have a positive mind, keep your minds open. Trust me, it's gonna make this journey a little bit better. So as news develops, I'll post more things, but I had to get this off my chest because I'm just gonna post a link instead of typing out uh, a dissertation and thesis for these comments when I'm reacting because it just, fingers can't be out here all day. <laughs> so I uh, appreciate y'all watching the video. All my Black Panther fans, all my Marvel fans, uh, definitely follow me, follow uh, the Wakanda Alliance on Instagram at the Wakanda Alliance, uh, Facebook Wakanda Alliance program, 
uh, YouTube Wakanda Alliance program. Check out the Black Panther and Storm Appreciation Group. Uh, that's one of the groups that I've been most active in. And I definitely want to make sure the conversations are more balanced. I want to see some more women offering their opinion on, on Black Panther and, and Storm. I didn't even talk about how they could possibly start to develop the relations with X-Men and all that. But I feel like they, you can't talk about X-Men without Black Panther. You just can't. And then Storm's going to get her own solo film, I think, was announced. So there's all these different things that are working. Um, but let's talk about it. Drop them in the comments. Uh, I'm probably going to post this on YouTube, Instagram, and all that stuff. If you want to have a direct conversation with me, holla at me. You want to bring me on your podcast. I'm down for it. You want to do like an Instagram live uh, debate <laughs> on what's possibly going to happen for the next Black Panther. I'm totally down with it. You want to get involved with the Wakanda Alliance. Uh, DM uh, one of our very many pages and we can work something out. So until then, uh, Wakanda Alliance comes back in February. Stay tuned for that. And I hope to post some more updates soon. So until next time, Wakanda forever. See you soon.